So what's going on guys, Kades here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 3 best expedition builds in New World. So most importantly I will give you 3 specific builds, one for healers, one for tanks and one for DPS. And for each one of them I will explain what attributes and perks you want to have, then what gems and specific gear you want to use to get out your stats, as much damage, healing and defensives as possible. Then as well I will show you the best gameplay of me using different weapons, so you would know which abilities you want to use first on your enemies and much more. So if all this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first build which is the best hybrid healer slash DPS build. And for the weapons we want to use the one and only void gauntlet and live staff. And then these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, if you start from level 0 you want to get your focus to 150 and then start building your constitution. And around level 60 you should have 250 focus, 50 intelligence and 100 constitution. And if you really don't care about the damage and you want to go full healer support build, then I would recommend to go with the 300 focus and 100 constitution. And lastly for your gear you want to go with the medium category. And the best gear setup is to have heavy helmet, heavy chest piece, medium gloves, light pants and medium boots. And this will give you 22.9 kg weight, which is exactly just below the heavy weight category. So then moving over to the first weapon, which is the Void Gauntlet, and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock the first ability called the Void Blade and then get these 4 perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the Oblivion and then unlock the next perk to him as well. And now let's move over to the other side and unlock the last third ability called the Orb of Decay and then get these 3 perks and that's it. Now from this moment you are feel free to spin your points in whatever order you like. So then let's go over to the second weapon which is the live staff and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock this perk and then the first ability called the sacred ground and then afterwards unlock all these 5 perks. Then now let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk and then the second ability called the beacon and then get these 2 perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the lights embrace and then get these 2 perks as well. And now from this point you are feel free to spend your points in whatever order you like. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. So first of all for the void gauntlet we have the first Q ability called the void blade. And after activating you basically get the void dagger which you can use like any other melee weapon. And by using auto attacks not only you will do a lot of damage but as well reduce your enemy's damage absorption. Then the second ability is called the oblivion which creates a circle around you. And your teammates inside the circle will get 20% damage increase. But on the other hand your enemies standing in the the circle will get their damage reduced by 5% which can stack up to 3 times which means that enemies inside the circle will do 15% less damage. And lastly our third ability is called the orb of decay and you can fire this orb which can go through your enemies and each enemy that it hits it will deal decent damage and reduce their damage absorption and then later that orb will come back and heal your nearby teammates. And lastly if you hold the right mouse button you can gain more mana but in exchange your health will go down. This is the only build that I would recommend to use this mechanic. So if you are standing in your own healing circle and you really need more mana and your mana potions are on cooldown then hold the right mouse button for a second or two and you should be good to go. So then for the second weapon we have the life staff and your Q ability is called the sacred ground which you have to point and select the area you want to place it in and then cast it for a split second. Then the R ability is called the lights embrace and it basically works the same way just for a single target. And lastly we have the F ability called the beacon which you can just aim and it places a huge circle on the ground. And if you target the player you can attach the spell to him specifically. So instead of the circle being on the ground it will be attached to a player making the spell very useful in expeditions and group PvP. So this build's main objective is to heal your teammates but at the same time support them with extra damage increase. So the way you want to use this build is first of all use your life staff and use all the 3 healing spells. I prefer to use the beacon and then the lights and embrace ability and this way my healing is increased and with the low lights embrace cooldown I can basically spam it every 2-3 seconds and then mostly on grouped up enemies I use the sacred ground ability and to select myself I hold the control button and then activate the spell 
And then when your teammates call out to give them extra damage, switch to the Void Gauntlet and use the Oblivion spell. And then as well, while you're in the circle, you can keep on doing medium dodge rolls. And because of the perks we have selected, every dodge will give us more stamina. So the circle is not only good for increased damage, but as well to escape enemy attacks. Then on top of all this, if you want to deal damage from range, then use your live staff, light or heavy attacks. And on the other hand, if you're farming mobs in PvE by yourself or the mobs aggro on you, then while still using the Void Gauntlet, activate the Void Blade spell and turn your weapon into a melee weapon and keep on using auto attacks plus the Orb of Decay and this will apply to the enemies even more damage plus heal yourself and nearby teammates. So my last suggestion is to use the Lab Staff for normal attacks and all abilities and then the Void Gauntlet for only abilities because the Lab Staff's damage is a lot higher and that's about it. So then for my last and final conclusions for this build. This Void Gauntlet and Lab Staff weapon combination is very strong and it is definitely the new meta for healers. And then lastly, for the Void Gauntlet, you want to use the Opal Gem. And then for your Life Staff, use the Diamond Gem. And then for all of your gear, rings, amulets and everything else, use the Enix Gems. So, in a quick summary, if you're looking to try out and play the new Void Gauntlet and you want to deal damage but at the same time support the rest of your teammates, then this is the best hybrid healer build for you, so have fun! So then moving over to the second build which is made for tanks and for your weapons we want to go with the sword and war hammer. And then these are the attributes you want to have. So then like you can see you always want to split all of your attribute points to have. So divide 50% into strength and 50 in constitution. And around level 60 you should have 200 strength and 200 constitution. And last but not the least for your gear you want to go with full heavy armor and you have to use a shield as well. So then for our first weapon we have the sword with shield. And the these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first things first, right off from the start you want to unlock both these two abilities called the Shield Rush and Shield Bash and then get these three perks. Then afterwards get the third ability called the Defiant Stance and then get the next perk to him as well. And now let's move over to the other side and unlock both these two perks and that's it. Now from this moment you can spend your points in whatever order you like. Okay and now let's move over to the second weapon which is the Warhammer and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock this one perk and then both these two abilities called the Shockwave and Path of Destiny and then get these four perks. Then from here let's take a closer look at the other side and get the last third ability called the Armor Breaker and then get these two perks and that's it. Now again you can spend your points in whatever way you like. Okay and now let's move over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. So then for our first weapon we have the sword and first Q spell is called the shield rush and the spell makes your character run very fast for 5 meters and if you hit the target while running he will get knocked back. Then the second ability is called the shield bash which when you use it it will deal decent damage and stun your enemies in front of you for 2 seconds and if you're using the carnelian gem then this ability activates the taunt passive which will make a lot of mobs target you and then all that you have to do is hit each mob once and instead of your teammates you will get aggro on you and then our third ability is called the Defiant Stance, which you can activate and for the next 8 seconds your resistance is increased. Or again if you're using the Carnelian Gem you can activate the spell and increase your threat level, which will make all mobs target you in 8 meter radius. And as a tank class this is mainly what you want to keep on doing. So then moving over to the second weapon which is the Warhammer and the first Q spell is called the Armor Breaker, which when using makes your character do powerful swing which penetrates 35% of the target's armor and deal additional damage. Then the R ability is called the Shockwave and when using the spell it will give us the ability to slam down the hammer and create a small earthquake and all targets standing in it will get stunned for 2 seconds. And then lastly we have the F ability called the Path of Destiny, which creates a huge electric wave, and all enemies standing in this path will be taking a bunch of damage. So the way you want to use this build for expeditions is to first of all remember that your main job as a tank is to keep all the enemies attention on you, which you can do by first of all activating the Shield Bash ability and in the next few seconds try to hit as many mobs as you can. Then when that ability's effect has run out then use your Defiant Stance, and this time all enemies in 8 meter range will automatically aggro on you. So for that time you mainly want to use the shield mechanic and keep on blocking the incoming damage. And then lastly if you ever see a healer or other DPS players in trouble or he gets overwhelmed by mobs then use the shield rush ability and knock back the target. And then after that is done we can now switch to the war hammer. And this weapon's main objective is to deal damage, stun your enemies and reduce their damage armor. So while your most important tanking skills are on cooldown you want to use the war hammer. And on grouped up enemies use the shockwave and then 
Paladin, Path of Destiny. In this will stun and do damage in AoE range. And then lastly, I mainly use this ability for only fighting against medium or big bosses, but you want to use this Armor Breaker. And this powerful swing will reduce the target's armor and deal extra damage. And of course, depending on the situation, you may need to change up your playstyle, but by far this is the best tanking build for expeditions. And you mainly want to tank and block damage with the sword and shield, and then on the side to stun and deal damage, switch to the Warhammer, and that's about it. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This sword with shield and warhammer weapon combination right now is super strong in expeditions as a tank roll, because you can survive for very long and make a lot of mobs target you, so the rest of your teammates can deal damage. And then lastly for our gem choice for the sword and warhammer you want to use the carnelian taunt gem, and then for all of your gear, amulets, rings and everything else use the enix gems. So what are you waiting for? Check this build out and don't forget to have fun! So now, moving over to my last and final build, which is the best DPS class, and for the weapons you want to pick the bow and spear, and then these are the attributes you want to have. So no matter from which level you start using this build, you first of all want to get your dexterity to 200, and then get 50 points in constitution, and then continue putting everything else in dexterity, and around level 60 you should have 300 dexterity and 100 constitution. And lastly, for your gear, you want to go with the light category, which means using the best setup, aka 1 medium chest piece and then all the other light equipment. So then taking a closer look at the first weapon which is the bow and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first things first, right off from the start you want to unlock this perk and then the first ability called the rain of arrows and then get these two perks. Then afterwards get the second ability called the poison shot and then get these three perks. Then from here let's move over to the other side and unlock the last third ability called the penetrating shot and then get these four perks and that's it. Now from this point and onwards, you're full free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next. So then, going over to the second weapon, which is the spear, and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all, I recommend for you to unlock this one perk, and then the first ability called the sweep, and then get these two perks. Then from here, let's go over to the other side and unlock these two perks. And then afterwards, get the second ability, and of course, the next three perks to him as well. And lastly, unlock the last third ability called the perforate, and then get these two perks. And now again from this point you can unlock all the other perks in whatever way you like. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. So for the first weapon we have the bow and the first Q spell is called the poison shot which gives you the ability to shoot an arrow and when it reaches a target the arrow will explode and create a green poison smoke and enemies standing in that smoke will be taking damage every second. Then the second ability is called the penetrating shot which deals a lot of damage and the arrow itself can go through multiple targets. And lastly our third ability is called the rain of arrows, which when using shoots the circle with a bunch of arrows, and each target that is standing in the circle will take damage and get a bleeding effect, which will do even more damage over time. And then for the second weapon we have the spear, and the first Q spell is called the sweep, which if you hit enemy makes him drop down to the ground, then the second ability is called the perforate, and when using it it does 3 super fast spear attacks, and if you hit the target with all of them he gets stunned for extra second or 2. And lastly we have the skewer ability, which when using makes your character rush forwards the dealing damage and applying a bleed effect on the target. So the best way to use this build in expeditions or in general for PvE is to at the start always try to look for big bosses or grouped up enemies, and then use the bow and activate all the spells in no matter which order. So I prefer to shoot one normal attack, then the poison shot, then the penetrating shot and then lastly the rain of arrows. But like I said I mainly would use normal attacks on single mobs and only for a bunch of grouped up enemies I would use all the three bow abilities. And then again the same goes with the spear, but the spear weapon I never use for big bosses but only for the medium to small mobs. So I usually use the sweep ability to make enemies drop down to the ground and then I use the perforate ability and then lastly the skewer and that's about it. With this specific build everything depends on the circumstances, so for some max level expeditions the boss will be hard, so you mainly will want to use only the bow and then for the other situations you will want to get the spear and vice versa. And then the last thing I want you to practice is dodge rolling and swapping your weapons back and forth. So it's very simple, you normally run then dodge once and before the animation ends you swap your weapons, so then without the animation you can dodge twice. 
and swap your weapons and this will give you a more crit chance and just general movement speed. This one dodge and swapping from bow to spear and then back to bow will give you nice speed boosts which you can use just normally to run around the expedition a lot faster and escape mobs or even red AOE circles. And as well you just mainly need to understand that to look for grouped up enemies and only on them use your abilities. So then you will damage multiple targets at once and then the rest of your time just keep on using the light attacks and that's about it. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This bow and spear weapon combination right now is super strong and is one of the highest damage builds from all the weapons in the game and with the spells we have selected we make this build work very well in pve and even pvp just of course you have to consider that to play this build it will be a bit harder and take more time to practice aiming especially at moving targets because it may seem easy to land an arrow on an enemy but it's actually quite hard so then lastly for the bow and spear you want to use the opal gem and then for all of your gear use the enix gems and of course don't forget to keep on using your dodge rolls to activate your gems on the weapons which will give you plus 15% damage increase. So in a quick summary, if you're looking for one of the best DPS builds for expeditions then this is the one for you so don't forget to enjoy. And that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good expedition builds that you would like to see in the next video then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said you have an amazing day and I'll catch you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.